What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So you can see we're here in the server room where we were working on last episode, and I have expanded out just a little bit. Uh, I started making all these ME drives that we needed for all of our different server banks, but we ran into a problem of running out of resources. I mentioned at the end of last episode that I was going to finish up this room, but we're using the laboratory blocks, and you need nether quartz to make that, and we are pretty much out of nether quartz <laughs> yeah well to make these drives you need me cables and to make the me cables you need the fluix crystals which require nether quartz so again <laughs> we're kind of stuck but yeah i was able to make this many and i just have stone as filler blocks for where more me drives will be i just kind of wanted to get a feel for the layout of this room and i think this is looking pretty good uh down below i have started clearing out space so we can run cabling and stuff to all these different server units yep that's what we're gonna do um, yeah, very basic stuff that we have going on right now. Uh, we'll get into more advanced stuff. You can use P2P tunnels and all sorts of crazy things. So you don't have to run these cables everywhere. We haven't got into that just yet. Uh, it does require more Fluex for those things. So <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, we will look at that in the future. What I want to do today, well, actually before we get into... Uh, the main part of today's episode. Let's head over to our big reactor. Uh, I started making more blocks for this. We're not quite there yet. It does take a lot of blocks for this thing. But we're most of the way there as far as getting the structure. Come on, load in. Yeah, so we got a lot of this reactor glass. I had to make a whole bunch more of the hardened glass. I thought we had a lot having like, what was it, 1,600 blocks? No, we needed more than that. Um, yeah, so we got the reactor glass on the sides here, except for this wall. We ran out of uh, the resources for this, so we're not quite done yet. And then we'll recover some of these blocks on the top because those will turn into the control rods eventually they will be poking through. Uh, but yeah, this is where we're at right now. And I filled in the floor, so there's a one block gap between the floor and our current reactor, which I have turned off right now, just so we don't ruin the multi-block structure. I think if you place one of these next to here, it'll screw things up. Anyway, uh, I just didn't want to mess with that, so I left that little gap there. Cool, so our big reactor is coming along. Um, yeah, we don't have the glass ceiling in here. I didn't want to make the reactor glass for the roof until I knew like how many blocks we needed to put in there so we're not making too much of the stuff. So anyway, we'll figure that all out later. Uh, but that's where we are on the reactor. And then over here at the B area, I've been putting in some more work. I added in a lot more of the apiaries. We'd already crafted up a lot of these and they weren't being used. And since we wanted to expand out to collect some more pollen and the, um, what is it called? I can't think of the name of it. The Royal Jelly. That's what it's called. Yeah, since we wanted to expand out and create a lot more of that, I have duplicated our bees, taking the drones from like this one and then putting it over here with a rocky princess and then those drones and then eventually just converts over. So I've done that with all of these. So we now have quite a few different hives potentially making the royal jelly. We got some in this one. Yeah, it's very random how we get these. Uh, these bees are not set up yet, so their production speed is the fastest. <laughs> but yeah, I keep coming over here and trying to put in the chocolate frame so they produce things a little bit more quickly. And we have collected a decent supply of this stuff now. Uh, let's, oops, let's check out... Yeah, I've taken all of the royal jelly and the pollen. I've stuck it over here in this chest, and then I've been going through all the combs and processing those. So we got a little over two and a half stacks of the, the pollen and just under two and a half stacks of the royal jelly. Uh, but yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along. We'll, I think we're going to be taking a break from the bees today, though. I just want to show you that progress update. Okay, so we're talking about needing nether quartz or not. Normally in Infinity, you'd want to make yourself a miscraft world. Well, we can't do that in Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Because in order to make a miscraft world, you need a book binder. The book binder combines a link panel with all the different pages you want and combines it into a book that you can create your dimension with. Well, this item does not have a recipe in Expert Mode. It's been disabled, so we cannot use miscraft at all to make any new dimensions. However... We can still use the ink mixer to make those link panels and the link panels are what you do or what you use to make linking books and the linking books can warp you from one place to another. So we can still use this mode of transportation if we want to go through, looks like all the different uh, crafting for this. 
<laughs> we might do that. I don't know. Uh, it, it all depends. This is a very convenient way of quickly marking location, warping back and forth and things like this, but I don't know if we are going to make this. So what we are left with is RF tools. Um, yeah. So RF tools is similar to Mistcraft. You can specify different things you want. So like you could say you wanted a cold taiga biome. You can go and make a world that's completely cold taiga. You can make an ocean that's lava or oil or whatever. So there's lots of different things we can specify. The key difference is when you make a world with Mistcraft, you make it and that's it. You have a free dimension. You can exploit however you want. With RF tools, you do have to pay to create the world in RF and you have to pay to maintain that world in RF. If you stop providing it power and you go to that world, you die. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> having a lot of power is definitely key for this mod. Now, in order to get going with this, we're going to need a few items like a matter receiver, matter transmitter, and not that, a dialing device in order to dial the different worlds we want to go to from our matter transmitter. And then there's like a dimension builder. Now I was looking at these recipes. I was thinking this was going to be pretty easy for us to just jump into, but no, it's going to be quite hard actually. Uh, in order to make a dimension builder, we need awakened draconium blocks and we get these through dracon draconic evolution. And we have to do a small little ritual in the end in order to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so we also need this draconic flux capacitors, which require an awakened core, more the awakened draconium ingots, uh, draconic energy cores. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we are going to need here. So basically what we need to get started, well, we need vibrant alloy flux electrum, mana steel, which we've gotten a decent amount in thomium. So we might have to jump into a little bit of Thomcraft in order to get going on this. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to be doing the magic mods here pretty soon. But what I was going to say is what we really need is a lot of this draconium stuff. So we haven't collected a lot of it yet. We have about a stack's worth. These just smelled. Well, no, actually, I'm wrong. We have about 306 draconium ores right here. Okay, well, we had more than I thought we did. I thought we only had like a stack, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I made the book for this mod. Um, the book shows recipes and things like this that the default options have, but yeah, it's changed slightly in expert mode. Um, but what I would like to do is get the, uh, we got to find it here, Ritual of Draconic Resurrection so we can respawn the Ender Dragon. Then we're also going to need to use that, uh, the dragon heart that we got from the original Ender Dragon to do a ritual. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here that we have to do in order to make those awakened draconium blocks or whatever. Okay, so probably, well, you know what? Let's go to the end real quick. We haven't done, we haven't been to the end for a while. I want to show you guys some changes that I've made there over time. So let me go over to spawn real quick. And we'll warp. Well, I guess we'll fly over to the end portal. All right, guys, so here we are in the end, finally warped here, finally got over here. Uh, so this is our original Enderman farm. Yep, and I have changed it a little bit. You might be able to see it on the mini map. Uh, it's kind of like a wedge shape. What? You, oh, okay. I thought he was in the spot he wasn't supposed to be. Yeah, so I expanded this out. I made it a little bit longer, and then I widened it out a little bit. And I have made it, like, angled like this, so when I'm standing underneath this cover, I can kind of see you know, all the different spots that the Enderman would be at and look at them. Uh, so the way this is set up, for those of you who might not have seen this before, let me go and turn hostile creature sound all the way down. We will grab our scythe. So the way this is set up is there's a two block covering above me, so Enderman cannot get to me, and then there's water above that, and that goes pretty far this way. So Enderman shouldn't be able to teleport away, but yeah, the way this works is you just look at the Enderman like so. They all run toward me, trying to kill me or whatever. You can kind of see them on the mini-map all right in front of me now. Some of them do try and teleport on top of the water. They take damage and they teleport back. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, and then we can just use this scythe to kill a bunch of these guys at once, like so. And this spawning platform is big enough now where there's a whole bunch of them that respawn by the time I get done killing that group. Before, I'd have to wait a while and walk away and all of this stuff. But yeah, this is much better now that there's a huge spawning area now for these guys. Okay, so yeah, that's what this is all about. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Let's put all this stuff away. I don't really need this. I just want to show you guys the changes that I made here. 
Okay, so that's what this is looking like now. And you see these guys are all like respawned over here. Pretty cool. So the real reason why I wanted to come to the end is because Draconic Evolution adds in comets around. Uh, the comets contain a bunch of the Draconic ore. So if you need more and you can't find enough just kind of on the island over here. Actually, you know what? Now that I remember, I did go through here and I picked all the different ores out of the island. That might have been where we got a lot of that different ore from. Uh, but yeah, once you run out of this, it's kind of hard to find this stuff. So the next option is to go and fly around and find those comets. Well, I did that. <laughs> Let's take a look at the mini map. So this is the end island. That's our mob farm right here. And I flew like pretty far out and then back and then forth and back and forth and back and forth. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> are there not any comets? But yeah, I finally came across one. It's pretty far away, huh? What is that? That's like at about 700 blocks away. Yeah, that's pretty far away. I mean, obviously there could be one like right here. I don't know. I haven't uncovered that area, but yeah, I kind of got tired of flying around. But anyway, uh, the comets are pretty much um, your best source of the draconic ore until you go out to the chaos islands, which are chaos guardian islands, or I can't remember what they're called. But anyway, um, yeah, those things are pretty far out there. I think you have to go out like 10,000 blocks or whatever. Here's the, the comet. These things do look pretty cool. I like them. Uh, but yeah, these contain a lot of the draconic ore. So if you need that stuff, it's a good place to farm it. Uh, yeah, like I said, these are kind of rare though. So it is not very easy to find these. And you do need a jetpack <laughs> with a lot of power. Uh, but yeah, definitely there's a lot of the draconium ore in these things. So that's a good way to farm the stuff. Cool, so let's head back real quick. So according to Draconic Evolution's book on the Dragon Heart, uh, we need to do this ritual in order to make the awakened Draconic blocks. Uh, okay, so the ritual is drop a Dragon Heart on the ground and activate it with an explosion like TNT or something like that. Then we need to drop four to 16 Draconic cores on the ground near the activated heart, four per charged Draconium block. So we're gonna do 16, most likely, with four draconium blocks. Uh, a few seconds after its initial activation, it'll draw all the nearby items towards it. So those cores we threw on the ground or whatever, those will get pulled into the heart. Uh, now quickly place one to four, depending on how many cores you dropped, charge draconium blocks near the heart. Okay, so we just have to place those on the ground. That's not too difficult. Uh, you'll know it's working when you see the heart's energy targeting the charged draconium blocks. Now stand back and watch the magic happen. You can only do this ritual once per heart, so you best make the most of it. Okay, so per heart, we can do four charged draconium blocks. And in order to get more hearts, we have to do the awakening ritual, which, you know, that's going to be more involved. And we'll look at that later. So the first thing we need to do is make ourselves the draconium blocks. And I was just looking at this recipe a minute ago. Uh-huh. Use a wyvern core. And the wyvern core requires these draconic cores, which is draconium ingots and gold and a diamond. Uh, it also requires vibrant alloy, flux electrum ingot, mana steel, which we've collected a lot of from those runic dungeons, and then thaumium, which I don't think we have a whole heck of a lot of. So, yeah, thaumcraft is in the future, and then we also need a lot of nether stars. All right, so each, let's see, each block requires one wyvern core, so we need... Four nether stars per block, so we're going to need 16 of those. So we're going to need 16 of each of these different things. Let's check out how much thaumium we have. We have 10 thaumium ingots. That's not a whole lot. Man, <laughs> that's definitely not enough to do what we want. Uh, it might be about the point where we're going to have to jump into thaumcraft. I know getting the thaumium stuff is pretty easy. We just have to put like the metallum or whatever in the crucible and then throw them iron. I think that's, I can't remember exactly what it is, but yeah, I don't know how the progression works with the magic side of the mods. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we're going to jump into this here pretty soon, I think. Yeah, I just really wanted to make an RF tools world, but now we're going to have to get into magic, it looks like. All right, so, so if I wanted to make a crucible, oh, I can't do that. I have to make the cauldron and then click it with the wand. So maybe what I'll do... Maybe I'll take a minute here. I'll go through the magic mods, figure out where we have to start for that, and then we will move on. 
All right, guys, so it looks like one of the first things we're going to have to do at this point in the game in order to get into magic mods is we are going to need to get ourselves some great wood logs. Uh, we need the great wood logs to try into great wood planks so we can make the tables and thong crap. Uh, the great wood planks we can get by putting great wood logs into a mana pool, which we don't have set up because we're going to need uh, Batania stuff. We can throw great wood logs through the elven portal thingy, but yeah, we don't have that. We can put it through a sawmill, which, you know, that's pretty easy for us to do at this point. Um, yeah, we need a work table from Thawncraft in order to do it otherwise. All right, so those are our options. This cow is really getting on my nerves. I'm going to avoid trying to kill it, though. I really want to. <laughs> All right, so get wrecked, Great Wood Tree. Oh, it didn't get as wrecked as I thought it was going to. But that's fine. We'll go ahead and collect a lot of the great wood. Why is this stuff not despawning? Is there just like one, one great wood log in here that's not? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I thought the uh, thought the tree would despawn, but it doesn't look like. Well, I guess it's kind of slowly despawning, huh? All right. Well, that's fine. How much of the great wood did we get? Uh, three and a half stacks. That's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like these leaves are decaying. So anyway, let's head back to the base. Uh, I did make myself a sawmill. And I made all the augments for it. I did make it a resonant version because we are far enough in the game now where we don't have to skimp on that kind of stuff. All right. Actually, we're going to put it over here, I think. Yeah, we don't really have a good spot for it. And again, like I said, I didn't want to put machines on the floor, but we're putting it on the floor for now until we rearrange this area and we figure out how we want to do this. Okay, so we need to put those speed upgrades. We did get one great wood sapling, which is kind of cool. And... There we go. Awesome. You know, I'm thinking about it. I don't know if I've ever made a sawmill before ever. I think this might be the first time I've ever done it. <laughs> All right. So let's get those great wood planks. We'll just get the rest of that stuff. All right, cool. So we got a lot of great wood planks and we got three great wood logs and then some sawdust. Awesome. All right. So we can go ahead and put all this stuff away. So we needed to make that table and this thing has changed where's my tables they're not on the first page anymore is on the second page here it is okay so we need great wood slabs and to get those yeah just three planks like this cool this will allow us to make two tables which i think we need i think right maybe i feel like there's we have to have three of these things for some reason so we'll just go ahead and make this many all right cool so then we have to put these down and click it with a wand. So a wand is going to be the next thing we're going to need. Yeah, don't we need one of those for like the uh, the work table or whatever? I think we might. I don't remember. Uh, all right. So figuring out how to make a wand. So iron capped wooden wand is probably going to be our first stop. So we need these iron caps, which is just iron nuggets. That's pretty easy. And a stick that is <laughs> super difficult. <laughs> all right. So let's make our first wand. All right, so two of those, and then we need a stick. Okay, we got lots of stick thanks to all those witches we are spawning. All right, so there's our first wand. And then I think all we have to do is click this. Nope, I've done this incorrectly. So we need the table for the arcane work table. How do we make, how do we make the other thing? <laughs> I can't remember. And once again, down the rabbit hole we go. Except with magic this time. So in order to make the research table, I'm pretty sure we needed to make these scraping tools. And in order to make the scraping tools, it says we need a glass file, a feather, and some kind of black ink or whatever. Yeah, that'll make our scraping tools. Okay, so how do we make the glass file? We use clay and then mana glass. How do we get the mana glass? Yep, we have to put glass into a mana pool to get the mana glass. That's the only way, so we are now officially going to be starting up Batania. <laughs> you know, there is an in-game guide here, and this will tell you, uh, you know, what you need to do and in what order, but it doesn't really say why you have to do this, because it just says, you know, how to start up uh, Batania. I don't think it says anything about needing the mana glass for the scribing tools at all. It just tells you basics about Batania. And then Thawncraft, it just tells you how to get your, your planks through the mana pool, but doesn't really see anything about that mana glass, I don't think. Yep, so that's something I just discovered on my own, <laughs> trying to skip over some stuff. So anyway, it is now Batania time. 
All right, so I made myself a Lexica Batania so we can see all the different recipes and things that we need to do for Batania. Uh, so then we can go into basics and mechanics and we need to make a petal apothecary and in here we can do the pure daisy and that'll get us our our wood and our stone that we need to make the mana pools and all sorts of other Batania stuff. So anyway, uh, the petal apothecary, the recipe's changed so the recipe in there is incorrect, so... The Petal Apothecary in Expert Mode is three double compressed cobblestone, a cauldron, which is iron plates, a couple of cobblestone slabs, and then we need some kind of a uh, mystical petal. All right, cool. So let us get some, we're not going to use these, we need some flowers. So we'll do a mystical flower here. Let's do a purple flower. All right, so that gives us two of those. So then we can say make a Petal Apothecary and we should have everything. Yeah, here we go. Cool. So here's this thing. Uh, we don't have a proper Batania area set up. So for now, we are just throwing it on the floor here until we can figure out where we're going to put the area. All right. So we need to fill this full of water. And then I think it is four white mystical petals to make the pure daisy. I did not mean to throw that in there. I think you can get that out by shift clicking, shift right clicking. Anyway. All right. So we got four of these things. Let's just throw those in here. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I did this before. I keep forgetting since I don't use Batania a lot. We have to throw seeds in there, which is going to be kind of interesting since we don't have a good way to duplicate seeds, I don't think. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and toss these in here. So, cute. Cool. So, there's our pure daisy. Awesome. So, with this thing, we need to put wood around it. I think it's actual logs so we have to put around there. And then stone. Um... I think we'll do stone first of all. We'll grab eight stone. We need some dirt. Like so. And then we can plant the daisy on the dirt. Guess we'll just stick this over here. Flower. And then we can go ahead and wrap stone around this little guy. Like so. And after about a minute. The stone converts, you can see it's got the little sparklies around it. After about a minute, it converts into the other type of stone that we need to make our mana pool. Cool, so I've been at this for a little while. I got enough for 64 living rock. I did another, what was that, 58 more of those things. And then I've been turning uh, jungle wood into this living wood and using the resonant exchanger to swap out the living wood with these logs, yep. So then we'll have a full stack of this stuff here in a second. Cool, so that is a pretty nice way to do that. I might hook up a way to get this thing to work automatically later on and produce this stuff automatically. I guess it just depends on how much of the living wood and the living rock we need. I'm not really sure how much more we're gonna need to be honest, but let us make, I think it's a diluted mana pool that we have to make first. Is it two words? Okay, two words. So yeah, there's a mana pool, a diluted mana pool. This is the one we're going to make, first of all. There's a fabulous mana pool, apparently, that just changes color. That's kind of cool looking, I guess. Uh, and then there's the everlasting guilty pool, and I believe this is like the creative mana pool. And there is a recipe that you can create this in expert mode, but requires a whole lot of stuff. I don't know uh, if how hard this is going to be. What is that? An Ikorium adored Ikor cloth strap silver wood wand. That sounds expensive and ridiculous to craft. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Primordial pearl. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, there is a way to get uh, the creative one, but we just want to make the diluted one. So we have to use living rock slabs. So we get six of those out of three of these. So let's do that. And then it's like this. Then we get one slab left over. Cool. We're actually going to have to make two of those. Because if I remember correctly, I'm doing that wrong. If I remember correctly, uh, once a diluted mana pool fills with enough mana, you throw another diluted mana pool in there and that turns into the regular mana pool. Actually, looks like there's a recipe for this. <laughs> Maybe you don't have to go through that step anymore and I just wasted. Oh man, okay, well if we can just go straight to the regular mana pool, that's fine with me. Can we convert these back? We can. Okay, well, I guess we don't have to do the diluted mana pool step. We'll just step right onto the regular mana pool. 
So now that we have the regular mana pool, we have to fill it with mana. So in order to fill it with mana, we have to get ourselves some generating flora. And we can make ourselves some day blooms, which generate mana during the daytime. And then uh, on the nighttime side of things, we could get ourselves some nightshades, which I think do the same thing. They just produce at nighttime, but they don't produce a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like setting up the water wheels, I guess. You know, those work and they produce, you know, a decent amount of stuff. But later on, you want to get yourself, like, culinary generators or whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, we could do end of flames, which I do believe take, like, coal and stuff. I would have to go through here. Lava buckets, block of coal. Yeah. So these things take burnable furnace materials, if I remember correctly and turn that into mana at a faster rate. There's also ones that will eat the extra bees and turn those into, I can't remember, maybe some munch dew or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, begun, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, these flowers right here take extra bees and those will turn that into mana. Uh, there's also the Primus flowers. We found these around before, but I was reading through this just a moment ago and it says you can't move these at all or they die, so. They produce mana faster than a day bloom. It doesn't say how much faster, so I don't know. Anyway, I think we're going to probably make some of these endo flames. It's just to show a recipe and how to do this. So we need mana powder, uh, brown, brown, light gray, and red. How do you get the mana powder? Shift click to see recipe. Oh, a diamond turns into a mana diamond. Oh, no, no, okay. Wait a second. You can just put any of the different powder. <laughs> okay, I thought we had to do a diamond for some reason since the shift click took me to the diamond. Now it's taking me to a block of diamond. That's weird. Okay, so mana powder. Yeah, it looks like just any kind of the uh, the petals ground up in there it turns into a mana powder. So we need to get ourselves some kind of mana to start with. And since we don't have any mana to make the mana powder out of, I guess we're gonna make some day blooms. So the day blooms, two yellow, one light blue, and an orange in the petal apothecary. So I'm gonna try and make, I don't know, like five of these things. So yeah, let me get on that real quick. We have plenty of the agricraft seeds and we can use these to make uh, more flowers or petals or I don't remember what it is that they make, but yeah, we'll be able to get all the stuff we need out of these. So yeah, let me go ahead and get that done and we'll be back. All right, now the next step is, now that we have some day blooms and we have the mana pool, we need a way to get the mana out of those flowers and into that mana pool. So we need to make ourselves a wand of the forest. Uh, one of these things right here, this is how we can link a flower to a mana spreader and then the mana spreader to the mana pool. So yeah, this is one of the items we need to make. So we need three living wood twigs and then two mystical petals. Uh, am I not clicked on this thing? we go okay so we need three of these and then some petals so I don't it looked like in the recipe that they had to be the same color I don't know if we can use different colors so let's find out real quick so there's an orange and a purple oh yeah and it even shows up on the the wand the different colors that's kind of cool and switch that purple out for blue yeah I like that all right blue and orange let's do it okay so then we also need the mana spreader let us grab one of these. All right, so we need a petal. doesn't matter what color, I don't think. And then some living wood and some gold. So we'll do this and we'll put the purple petal in there. That should be good enough. Awesome. So I set the mana pool up and the day blooms over by the bee area just because that area is chunk loaded and it's grass. We can plant flowers on it. Uh, it is kind of hard to find our flowers in amongst all these other flowers. But yeah, there we go. So there is five day blooms that I made. I'll might end up making some more. It just kind of depends. Uh, so we need to put the mana spreader like right on top of here. And then we need to use our wand of the forest, right click, and then right click on the mana pool. Or is it shift click and then, there we go. I guess the shift click and then shift click will link it there. So now it's facing downwards. Uh, since I place these day blooms before I place the mana spreader, they don't know where they should be uh, bound to. So I can shift right click on this and then to that. Now this is bound to this guy, I think, right? Yeah, it looks like. All right, so let's do that to all of these. Yeah, if you just right click, it shows you how much mana is in there. It updates that status bar. 
and then shift right click will link it there we go okay so once the mana spreader fills up with enough mana you can kind of see how it's gaining there on that little bar once it gets enough it shoots a mana beam into the mana pool and then there we go we have some mana in there uh, I'm not sure uh, how far this gets before it has or how far that bar can fill up before it sends the mana to the pool looks like about halfway before that first notch about eighth of the way full right on so yeah we are collecting a little bit of mana in there so now we might be able to take three pieces of glass and drop it in there and make our mana glass to make our glass file to make our scribing tools <laughs> uh, let's see if we can do that there might not be enough in there just yet yeah, the thing about Batania is there aren't any numbers, so it's all just best guesses and assumptions if you have enough stuff to craft things. Uh, so let's turn off our magnet. And let us cue... Oh yeah, you can see there's a check mark. That means there's enough in there. So there's one. But not enough for a second one. Okay, well we gotta wait a little bit of time. Where did that go? Uh, magnet. Got it. It was somewhere. All right. Well, I was able to make the scribing tools. We were made the glass file out of the Tanya glass. We made the scribing tool. So now we got to do is just click this right on this table. And yes, that converts into the research table. Awesome. So now we can do our Thomcraft research. So the next thing we need to make is the thermometer or thermometer or however you want to say that. Uh, anyway, so in order to make one of these, we need a piece of mana glass, which I just crafted an extra one of those, a couple of pieces of gold, and some of these different shards. Cool. So I don't know if I have any of the shards yet. I know I got a lot of the ore. Oh, no, we do have shards. A lot of it appears. Okay, so shard, shard, glass, and then two gold. Cool. All right, so there we go. Now we can start into a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of Thomcraft painted glowstone. Painted glowstone. Hmm. I guess we can't do any of the chisel stuff. Trash can. Yeah, a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm gonna have to research like the basic things before I can research the more advanced stuff. So, like for instance, I think I can do grass. No, maybe grass is just too complicated for me to understand. Uh, I can understand water. Can't do the tall grass. What about these squid? Can I look at you yet? Nah. All right. Well, I, I know there's like different ways to research things really quickly. Like if you do it in a certain order, you'll learn all the different aspects and then you'll be able to research whatever you want. So that'll probably be the next step I do is just go online and try and find one of those research guides and get this done. Just bust that out. Uh, yeah, I have to go around, learn all the different aspects, and then we can start into Thomcraft and get all of this stuff done that we need to do. Well, guys. I wanted to do RF tools today. Now we're in Thomcraft. How does that happen? <laughs> but yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.